Hey everybody, it's me again, Fervor for Faith. I know I haven't put up a video in a little while, but I wanted to get this video out because I think it's interesting. I think it can help people, and I think it's a good witness uh, for Jesus Christ in the Bible. So we, we know recently there's a lot of people who want to say that the Bible is not scientific, that the Bible doesn't, doesn't have factual information in it, that it's a book of fables and those types of things. Atheists, agnostics, those types of people are going to tell you that. But they're wrong. Now, we know that the Bible is true. We know it because we have the Holy Spirit within us. But for those people who maybe are on the fence, maybe don't realize the, the amount of truth that is in the Bible, I wanted to put out this video because I think it will help, I think it will help them. I also think it's just a, just a very interesting study, and I think that it'll really, really make you, make you just in awe of of what God is able to do. So, without further ado, let's talk about this incredible scientific fact that is in the Bible, and it's going to be with regards to leprosy. Now, in Leviticus, it talks a lot about leprosy, what you do when when someone is thought to have leprosy, the priest goes and examines them. If they're found to have leprosy, things happen. If they're not, then they can rejoin the congregation, those types of things. So I'd, I'd like to focus in, though, on Leviticus 13, verses 45 through 46. So let's go ahead and let's read that. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. All the days wherein the plagues shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall, he shall dwell alone. Without the camp shall his habitation be. Now that seems kind of harsh. You know, you, you always see this, this picture of, of a leper, like, oh, he's an outcast, you don't talk to him, and all that. But, you know, lepers obviously have leprosy. And leprosy was a big problem in the ancient world. Uh, and in some, some third world countries, unfortunately, it's still a problem. But what I wanted to focus on is, is the um, sentence where it says, And he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. Now, that is incredibly important because of the way that leprosy is actually transmitted. Let's read what WebMD.com says about how you can contract leprosy. It says, quote, You can catch it only if you come into close and repeated contact with nose and mouth droplets from someone with untreated leprosy. Okay, so you can't catch leprosy from somebody unless you come into contact with with their nose droplets or mouth droplets. So like their saliva, you know, if they blow their nose, you know, like the, if their nose drips, you know, if you come into contact with those things, you're going to catch leprosy. The, in the Bible, God commanded the children of Israel, if someone was found to have leprosy, they had to, uh, they rent their clothes and they, and they, they shaved their head, they made their head bare, as it says, those were signs of mourning in the Old Testament. And also says, he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry, unclean, unclean. Now, the, a covering on your upper lip, that's going to cover your mouth, and it's also going to catch anything that comes out of your nose. Okay, I'll, I'll show you a picture here of kind of what it might have looked like. You see, nothing's going to get out of that covering. It's going to catch anything that comes on that comes from your mouth and anything that comes from your nose. And when you when they say unclean unclean, you're going to know that that person has leprosy. And when they go outside of the camp, there's going to be no chance of you catching this disease. So it's going to catch all of those nose and mouth droplets that are contagious that make it contagious. Now you might say, "Oh, well probably people have known that throughout time. Let me read for you this excerpt, or these excerpts, I should say, from Wikipedia. Now you'll say, oh, well, Wikipedia, anybody can write anything. But I have the sources that I'm going to put in the description box 
on the video that you can go and look and you can look at all these things. I know that there's actually a website where you can find some of these some of these articles. Uh, you you do have to pay like thirty dollars for one of them, but you can find them. Is my point. So I'll go ahead and I'll read this these excerpts from Wikipedia uh, on the topic of leprosy. It says the importance of the nasal mucosa was recognized as early as 1898. Let that sink in for a minute. 1898. The importance of the nasal mucosa was recognized as early as 1898 by Dr. Schaefer, in particular that of the ulcerated mucosa. The quantity of, of ba bacilli from nasal mucosal lesions in lepromat lepromatous leprosy was demonstrated by Shepard as large, with counts ranging from 10,000 to 10 million. Pedley reported that the majority of lepromatous patients showed leprosy bacilli in their nasal secretions as collected through blowing the nose. Davy and Reese indicated that nasal secretions from lep lepromatous patients could yield as much as 10 million viable organisms per day. Now, it said as early as 1898 by Dr. Schaefer. I couldn't find his actual his first name. I only we it's Dr. Schaefer in the article from Archive for for Dermat Dermatology und Syphilis. Uh, that's volume 44. It's like a it's like a journal, like a like a science journal. Volume 44, pages 159 to 174. And again, that's dated 1898, I believe December 1898. And then it talked about someone named Shepard, that's Charles C. Shepard, and that was from the article Fat, Acid Fast Bacilli in Nasal Secretions in Leprosy and Results of Inoculation of Mice. And that's dated 1960. And then Pedley, J.C. Pedley, from 1973, the title of the article is the nasal mucus in leprosy, and that's from the Leprosy Review, uh, 44, pages 33 through 35. And then Davy and Reese, that's T.F. Davy and R.J. Reese, from 1974, in the article, The Nasal Discharge in Leprosy, Clinical and Bacteriological Aspects. So let that sink in for a minute. 1898, it was recognized that that nasal secretions in leprosy were important as it says as early as 1898 now the the old testament the the torah the first 5 books of the old testament were written over 3000 years ago it, god commanded the children of israel to put a covering on their upper lip which was going to catch all of those nasal secretions and those and, and the uh, mouth droplets as well is going to catch all of it in this covering so you nobody was going to be able to catch it isn't that amazing I mean praise God for that isn't that doesn't that blow your mind over 3,000 years before it became common knowledge God commanded his people to do this very thing isn't that crazy I just thought that you guys would enjoy that so I hope that this video is, is a help to some people uh, who might be searching, who might be looking into Christianity, looking into having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and being born again. Um, now this isn't the gospel. I'm not preaching the gospel in this video. But if, 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 you have, if someone has preached to you the gospel and you're thinking about it and you just needed that extra thing. I hope and I pray that this will help you to see that you, that you need Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. Now, for my brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope that this strengthens your faith. Uh, it certainly strengthened mine to see this. I, I didn't know that this was there until recently. I just think it's an incredible testimony to, to the authority of Scripture. So thank you for watching and God bless.